Okay, so let's make a quick recording using the built-in microphones. You can see that we are in stereo or two-channel mode right up here. Now, if you're not in this mode, press menu, scroll up to mode here and press that same dial. And then we can select whichever mode we wanna be in. Let's be in the stereo mode and we'll select that and we'll go back to the main screen. Now, all we need to do is select the input which is probably already set for you. If not, select the mics right here and press record once. You can see we now have a signal level coming through and we can adjust the recording level just on the right hand side with the up and down buttons on the right hand side of the unit. Now the maximum is 100, if I was to take that all the way to 100 here. And this would be fine as long as we don't distort the recording. If your level hits the max, check it out. You have a visual warning right here that you will have a distorted recording. So if you're going to record, say, a loud band rehearsal, keep an eye on this guy. And I would back off the recording level until that distortion goes away. Remember that we don't want to be too afraid of the right-hand side of the meters. If you are too cautious, uh, then your recordings will have to be amped up later uh, to hear them bring up that noise floor uh, with it too. So once the levels have been set, you just basically hit record again to actually commence uh, recording. But before we do, let's actually look at some pre-recording tricks and we'll go ahead and check them out by pressing menu. We'll select the menu button on the right hand side and we'll go down into input. I'll select that and go down to the fourth setting here, which is our auto level. If I was to select that and turn that on, and then go back to the main screen by holding down menu for a couple of seconds. Now, if I try to set the levels by using the buttons on the right hand side, I'll get this warning. If uh, auto level is on, then no manual adjustments are possible. The H4N listens to the input and adjusts the level appropriately. So then you might ask, <laughs> why don't I just leave the auto level on and just call it a day? Well because the auto level setting, like any auto setting on any device, it basically does a good job of guessing nine times out of 10, but there might be some uh, audible pumping of the sound while the H4N goes kind of hunting for a level. Now imagine that you're playing a guitar part that has some very quiet passengers, some quiet finger picking and then hard strumming. In the quieter passengers, sorry, passages, the auto mode might ramp up the levels and pump up the noise rather than just recording it at its, uh, at its natural volume. So an auto level is like me basically moving my ear back and forward, trying to hunt for the sound rather than just sit back and enjoying the natural dynamics uh, of a performance. Now, on the other hand, one place I would nearly always use auto uh, would be if I was recording maybe interviews or a podcast at a trade show. Walking from place to place, recording loud voices and soft voices is a really great candidate for auto level. For recording performances in controlled environments where you know how loud the recorded audio will be is almost always best left uh, to manual recording levels. Now, if you want to make sure that loud spikes get controlled uh, so as to uh, just avoid distortion, there's an, actually another trick up the H4N sleeve. We'll go down into input and go into comp limiter and select that. You'll now have the option to apply the compressor or limiter to either the mic or the line inputs. So I selected the mics here if I pressed the data dial here, we have three compressors and three limiters that are tailored for each of these purposes. To understand compression, let's see another short video from our Pro Audio Academy series. Compression, specifically dynamic compression, is one of those effects that doesn't really get the adoration or respect like some of those cool effects like reverb or vocoders. However, I believe it has a huge impact on making your recording's far more punchy and it's almost impossible to get a vocal like what you hear on the radio or CD without it. Dynamic compression takes a signal and squashes its peaks down so you can bring the overall level up. Let's take an example of text instead of sound. As you can see, the small words in the sentence are hard to read, but I can't blow up the sentence beyond the size of the big words. But what if I shrunk down the big words and then blew everything up? 
Perfect. The same thing with audio. Here's a recording of that text. The small stuff gets lost in the mix. Obviously, we can't just amp up the whole signal beyond the limit of the loud parts. But we can set our compressor to squash everything above a certain threshold down by a factor of, say, 4 to 1. Then we can apply a makeup gain to bring that entire signal up. Listen to how an uncompressed vocal sits in a mix. The small stuff gets lost in the mix. Now the compressed version. The small stuff gets lost in the mix. So compression can even out the surprises in terms of signal levels and give you a recording that will have a higher average level. And a limiter is a really a special type of compressor that flattens out any signal above a certain threshold. It's, it's basically like a compressor with a very high ratio. Now, rather than getting into all of the details of compressors, I would really recommend making some test recordings uh, with each of these presets here. Remember that the compressor limiter is placed before your recording. Now, there are some other effects that we'll see later on, but just know that these settings, they're printed onto your recordings. You can't uncompress a recording, so I'd recommend uh, that you make some test recordings with each preset so that you're familiar uh, with the outcome. Again, a perfect application to use compressors and limiters is when you're recording um, in an environment where you're really not in control of the levels being recorded. If you're interviewing maybe say a crowd of people and placing the H4N in front of a little old lady one moment and maybe a screaming teenager the next, compression and limiting can really help save a recording. Now, another potential killer of recordings is wind noise. Let's back out of here once and once more, and we'll scroll up to the low cut and we'll select that. Now, just like the compressor limiter, you can set the effect to be on or off for each input, either the mic or the inputs on the bottom of the unit. If I set this back up to mic here, I'd then be given a series of frequency settings from 80 hertz all the way up to 237. Low cut takes all of the frequencies out below a certain threshold. Set it to 80 hertz and all sound below 80 hertz, the very, very low bass sounds, will not get recorded. The wind noise can be down in this area and my advice would be to raise that setting up from 80 hertz until the wind noise starts to go away. Trouble is that that may start to cut away some of the depth of your voice. Now, if you're James Earl Jones, this is CNN, then you might really notice the low cut taking out the character or the, you know, the bass of your voice. If you're Pee Wee Herman, <laughs> then you might be able to afford to roll off up to 200 hertz uh, without a problem. Always remember that you can use a wind sock, like the one that came with the unit, to slow down any wind noise. So between that acoustic barrier of the wind sock and the electronic barrier with that low cut, you should be able to tame wind noise uh, pretty well. Okay, so enough talk. Let's actually make some test recordings. 